I'm at a gypsy. It's just even just to zoom out, isn't it just crazy to think of what, like, you must have just fought your way through your career like even when you you zoom out to like the early retirement it's like that probably didn't feel early man like that probably (laughs) felt like a fucking late retirement like i want to be done a while ago like this shit is a lot like to go through you know like you really put yourself through a fucking crazy amount of stress and pressure and like just fear and you know then you deal with like the media and you deal with like the fame and then the money and like it's a fucking crazy way to live a life and then you know then you've got to get on that bike every single weekend like it's just an insane way to to live a life and you know we talked about before just in the car on the way here like you you get what you want you know it's like you just obviously you just wanted to get it done and like do what you know get it done so do what you said you were going to do and then fucking dip because it's just like this is a lot it was um you know it's i struggled to understand why it was a little harder for me than other people a lot of Mm. other people they don't mind the fame they didn't mind um all the rest of it that came with the racing uh, the pressures, all those sorts of things, uh, and I've only been very recently diagnosed with uh, with anxiety as well, which I didn't actually know was a thing. Quite mm. honestly, I thought it was just something people made up to say, um, you know, yeah, there's another out. another yeah. another way for being stressed out. And I'm like, yeah, yeah everyone gets stressed, but uh, I didn't realise why even my back locks up um, yeah. just from anxiety. I, get, I feel I get in pressure. My neck and my yeah, mine's yeah, yeah between the shoulder blades. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got two discs there that realistically need replacing, and so when that locks up, and I can feel it come on now. Now I, I'm you're aware of aware it. of it. Yeah, I can feel it come on when I'm in situations, and and it doesn't feel comfortable. Um, so it would have been easier in my career if I knew about it, and sort of maybe could have managed the situation a little bit better. But again, uh, I got a bad rap for sometimes being a little bit closed off um from people and media and all that sort of thing because i just was never ever comfortable doing it Mm. um crowds i was never comfortable with uh, all that side of it and then race day literally for years until probably my last two years of of racing motor gp uh the better weekend i had the more i wanted to die yeah i would literally be curled up on the motorhome floor or whatever um sick as a dog just stomach in in knots just you know i did not want to race it was just i could not feel any worse any uh any more apprehensive of everything it was just you know i I felt the pressure from um the team from everyone that had ever helped me all the rest of it you know you've you've got a team of up to 70 people there with hospitalities and all that sort of stuff sometimes over 100 to be honest I, i couldn't tell you the exact numbers and especially when you were the number one rider and everyone's expecting you to win basically every weekend um you know that that built on me and i only realized that after i finished my career why that used to i used to struggle so much with it and then i i sort of got my own little mantra that that helped me my last couple of years which was you can only do what you can do and you cannot do more than that yeah which for me was i'm going to go out there and give it my best and i can't give it more than my best as long as i know i've prepared well i've done everything uh, as as well off the track as i can on the track uh, something that you alluded to before is you get out of life what you want. Yeah. Um, and so many people uh, like to say that they want things and they're, they're, they're desperate for it, but it's how you go about it and how you, um, like I said, everybody that lines up on the grid, it's exactly what you were saying before basically, was that everyone that lines up in these races, they want it probably just as badly as you do. But there's a big difference in how they go about getting it. Yeah. And people who make it happen versus people who want it to happen yeah and you know this is something that was very different with me it was it was so hard for me to go racing um that i made sure i did everything and ticked every box that i could um some days some weeks i had those lazy weeks where i just you know couldn't drag my ass off the couch and it maybe showed at the end of a couple of races and that would really kick my ass into gear and go right i can't i can't slacken off here especially in my early years and then uh you know that just made me stronger mentally uh, as the years gone on yeah it's uh like to know like to be a fly on the wall in your mind 
and to hear some You'd of the have convers- plenty of space. <laughs> to, to hear some of the conversations that you would have had with yourself when you were like in the fetal position in the motorhome like i can imagine just you basically trying to talk yourself out of lining up every single time that you were on the grid and i i i think a lot about that because i mean i have that internal resistance so much i mean like i didn't want to release the daniel ricardo podcast for a week yeah i just like didn't i was like this fucking sucks like i suck i'm not good at this like i shouldn't be doing this this isn't this isn't something i want like i was a fucking mess after it you know maddie's like what's wrong dude you're good i'm like nah this you, is you fucking. can't change how how it's coming in though can you? but it's just this internal conversation and, and i know like i've got i guess techniques that i try and work through and to uh to alleviate that because it's essentially like what i've figured out is like it's a conversation that you're having with yourself in your head Mm -hmm. but it's like if you say like i see that cup well i see that cup who the fuck am i talking to (laughs) who is the person that i'm telling that i see like i'm the one that's seeing and tell so the left side of the brain (laughs) yeah we get into these crazy conversations with ourselves, and i mean i i would uh when i first started competing in jiu-jitsu that's probably like the scariest thing i've ever done just because it's like it's just a it's a combat thing and i uh i'd have just that same deal like i couldn't sleep the night before all day i'm trying to talk myself out of going i don't think i should do this then it's just like it's just this constant conversation um that you're having with yourself you're almost trying to talk yourself out of it then you end up doing it anyway and the the only thing that helped me with that was uh i guess when you said like uh you can only do what you can do my version of that was if you're gonna leave leave yeah but if you're not gonna leave don't torture yourself for the five hours that you're here before you slap hands and you do the thing like if you're gonna do the thing just do the thing if you're not if you're not then leave, leave. and then i was like well I'm I, not- I didn't give myself the leave option it was like <laughs> yeah do it and be happy with with what you've done yeah so just to to know what you would have been going through for all of those years and to just be performing at the crazy high level like it honestly like you probably just you stressed your system into getting sick the way that you did like it would have i can see i could see a way in which like you just physically made yourself sick because of the what it took for you to compete at the highest level and some people it doesn't phase them yep you know and some people can i'm sure valentino was probably the kind of guy that would be like hey yeah 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 and like you know he's just there but it's it's fun for him i'm jealous of people like mark and valentino who just don't seem to give a crap yeah and i mean Um, jet you know you hang around jet like jet's kind of the same sort of vibe you know but there is like for as much as that is a positive then at times it's a negative and it's like there's there's like you said there's so many ways to skin a cat like you obviously had something that was so special in your own way but that just wasn't sustainable with like what you had to kind of like put yourself through if that makes sense for me and and i think a big part of the reason why you know my body's just not handling it now and i'm i've I've got this cfs and we don't know exactly what causes it yet so i can't sit here and say this is why it yeah. happened but i'm sure it's a big part of my my body breaking down basically is i was very good at switching everything off mm. so no matter how bad or how nervous or how pent up or anything i was i was very good at, at telling myself to just suck it up and get on with it mm. um and so and when did that start like at what point in the weekend is that like a friday practice thing is that before you get there is that the morning of like no that was just um it, it's a bit like anything you know you were talking about um you're surprised that i had fear going three corners um my will to win was greater than the fear mm-hmm. so then i had to if if i let fear control me and and everything then i never would have gone as fast as what i did so i would figure out how to be fast without you know the, the same risk and then there of course takes a little bit of fear out of it um but it's also for example going through turn three at phillip island uh or turn three at valencia the way i used to go through them it, it, it's it's a lot to overcome like mm. the the way you've got to crack the throttle on at those speeds 
Um, <laughs> Phillip yeah. Island's fifth gear, right? We're going through there. It's 265 going into the corner. Uh, K's an hour down through the dip. And because you're always getting a big uh, push of wind from the inside going out to the ocean there, uh, a lot of the time when you're pushing in through there, the front end wants to go. And I was saying before, I don't like the front end. I don't like the feeling of it compared to other people. I never had confidence. So as soon as you cock that front end, you can't crash with the front. Mm. If you think about it, as soon as you've got a little cock in your front end, basically that doesn't Dirt sound right. Style. Dirt track style. You, you can't lose the front. So basically I would slide before I even got to the corner. And this is where people don't realize, number one, the difficulty uh, the overcoming the fear and then why it works um, is that when you go into the corner and you have to get that rear to break before you get to the corner because otherwise as soon as you get into the corner your front end's dictating everything yeah. and you don't start to slide until you come out of the corner yeah. and then that's just sliding you know that's not hard uh, these bikes have a lot of power it's really not hard to slide these things um, but sliding them before you get to the corner so I've got to go in, back off just to get the front to load a little bit and then I would crack the throttle on as soon as I could to get that rear to brake and basically just get that little bit of, of clock on the front corn, on the front tyre and then basically I couldn't lose it. So then I could just control it, try and almost stand it up and then straight line it out of that corner and then I could straight line brake going into Honda uh, which, is, which is very hard. Normally you drift out, then you've got to brake on the left side, bring it back. So you're braking on the edge, then bringing it back, braking on the edge of the tire. So it's a heavy braking zone that you've got two edges to, to brake on. For me, I would slide through that corner, stay further left, and then I could just pick it up and brake straight and then take all the risk out of out of Honda. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why I did thing, but to overcome the, the power. And it was the same thing I used to do in um, uh, Valencia. So turn three in Valencia, is, it's hard. Same thing. You can go through there and slide, but you've already missed the whole point of it. Yeah. So I had to slide before I got the corner and throwing it in there was, was really hard and risky. You know, I never did crash there doing it, but if things went wrong, it's you, you, you're going into the grandstand sort of thing. But basically I'd go up, uh, come out first, second, third, short shift, and then throw it. And then by throwing it, I'm sliding all the way in through the corner um, and I can stay further left because same thing. I never liked the feeling of the front end. Yeah. And you'd always have to brake on the edge of the tire, bring it back, and then go into the right hander on the edge of the tire, cold side of the tire. I didn't like it. So what I would do is slide, stay further left, brake in a straighter line. Then I could basically get the tire warm and then ease my way into the right hander without risk. So I didn't like that right hander. So I just went well. The left, the left side of the tire is warm because we've been spinning it through turn 13, 14. Yeah then turn one turn two all left handers so the left side's warm i can trust this uh as long as you trust your slide but then the right side was always cold and it's one of the most dangerous corners probably in the world for crashing and so um yeah i just took the risk out of those corners uh by doing that but everyone just saw me as yeah. i was sliding it through the corner you know coming out but it's there's a lot more to it if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.